Hi. Hello. Howdy. Um, so, um, I'm in support of um, getting trashed in Tremont on Sundays. Let's so, pretend it's Sunday. Yeah. I've got my, um, I've got my garbage bag dress on, and I'd like to, um, acknowledge my, one of my best friends in the world, Anna Roth. She's been one of my sponsors tonight. She, um, she did my wardrobe, but she also, um, does wardrobe for local films around here, so, um, I kind of Trashy films? Yeah, she did Ron. She did Ron Jeremy on wardrobe. Actually, she um got some porn star outfits and dressed Ron Jeremy up. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. They wear so, costumes in porn. Not for long. Um. <laughs> well, actually, they had to be tearaways. So she had to make sure that they were um tearaway style, so they could just rip them off. Oh, I love off. that. We need um. to talk. <laughs> Um, I, I want to read this before I read any of my own stuff because there was a period where I didn't read anything for five years I've, since I was in high school and a man by the name of Chandler Fritz who no longer lives in Cleveland anymore but had a short stint here inspired me to start reading again and when we used to read together we used to um, get an article or someone else's poem or a book and chop it up and collage it and read single words back and forth. So when the language foundry had the 24-hour reading, that's exactly what we did. And I actually read this um, from Psychotic Reactions in Carburetor Dung by yeah. Lester Bangs, my, one of my favorite writers of all time. And he would write, he, he would give his opinion no matter what. Um, even if he was your best friend and he was touring with your band, he, he might have wrote, written a shitty review just because that's the way he felt. So this is, um, this is right after John Lennon died. It's called Thinking the Unthinkable about John Lennon. You always wonder how you will react to these things, but I can't say I was all that surprised when NBC broke into The Tonight Show to say that John Lennon was dead. I always thought that he would be the first of the Beatles to die because he was always the one who lived the most on the existential edge, whether by diving knees first into left-wing adventurism or just by shutting up for five years when he decided he really didn't have anything much to say. But I always figured it would be by his own hand that he was merely the latest celebrity to be gunned down by a probable psychotic only underscores the banality surrounding his death. Look, I don't think I'm insensitive or a curmudgeon. In 1965, John Lennon was one of the most important people in the world. It's just that today I feel deeply alienated from rock and roll and what it has meant or could mean, and alienated, alienated by my fellow man and woman and their dreams or aspirations. I don't know which is more pathetic, the people of my generation who refuse to let their 1960s adolescents die in a natural way, or the younger ones who will snatch and gobble any shred, any scrap of a dream someone declared over 10 years ago. <clears throat> Perhaps the younger ones are sadder because at least my peers may have some nostalgic memory of the long, cold embers they're kneeling to blow upon, whereas the kids who have to make do with things like Beatlemania are being sold a bill of goods. I can't mourn John Lennon. I didn't know the guy, but I do know that when his, all is said is done, that's all he was. He was a guy. <clears throat> the refusal of fans to ever let him just be that was finally almost as lethal as his assassin. And please, let's have no more talk of this being a political killing and don't call him a rock and roll martyr. Did you watch the TV specials on Tuesday night? Did you see all those people standing in the street in front of the Dakota apartment where Lennon lived singing Hey Jude? What do you think the real cynical, sneering, sarcastic, witheringly witty, and iconoclastic John Lennon would have said about that? John Lennon, at his best, despised cheap sediment and had to learn the hard way that once you've made your mark on history, those who can't be so grateful, they'll turn it into a cage for you. Those who choose to falsify their memories, to pine for a Neverland 1960s that never really happened that way in the first place, insult the retroactive Eden they enshrined. So in this time of gut-curdling 
sanctimonious upon ultimate icons, I hope you will bear with my own pontifications long enough to let me say that the Beatles were certainly far more than a group of four talented musicians who might have even been the best of their generation. The Beatles were most of all of a moment. But their generation was not the only generation in history, and to keep turning the gutted lantern of those dreams this way, and that in hopes the flames that will somehow flicker up again in the 80s is a, is a futile pursuit as trying to turn Lennon's lyrics into poetry. And as for that moment, not for John Lennon the man that you are mourning, if you are mourning, ultimately you are mourning for yourself. Remember the other guy, the old friends of theirs who once said, don't follow leaders? Well, he was right. But the very people who took those words and made them into banners were violating the slogan they carried. And they're still doing it today. The Beatles did lead, but they led with a wink. They may have been more popular than Jesus, but I don't think they wanted to be the world's religion. That would have cheapened and rendered tawdry and what was special and wonderful about them. John Lennon didn't want that, or he would have wouldn't have retired for the last half of the 70s. What happened Monday night was only the most extreme extension of all the forces that led him to do so in the first place. In some of his last interviews before he died, he said, what I realized during the last five years away was that when I said the dream was over, I had made the physical break from the Beatles, but mentally there is still this big thing on my back about what people expected of me. And we were the hip ones of the 60s, but the world is not like the 60s. The whole world has changed. And produce your own dream. It's quite possible to do anything. The unknown is what it is. And to be frightened of it is what sends everybody scurrying around chasing dreams, illusions. Goodbye, baby, and amen. Los Angeles Times, December 11th, 1980. gets me warmed up, you know, um, before I read my own, and I think that, um, Lester Bangs definitely inspires me, and everybody should have a copy of this book, take a good look at it, if you haven't read it, you should, if you like rock, if you like old rock, um, alright, anyways, this one's about a girl, Toxic Blister. Small girls get on their high horses and forget about the pygmy pony they have left in a stable. Maybe Joan of Arc had the complex and Napoleon played pinball and wore floral dresses. It's hard to see the ball when you can barely reach the glass. Stealing wax from crates, stealing fruit from gardens, claiming it was your own, shrieking hellos that could rattle at a speakeasy. Maybe it's me that tries sometimes to color so hard inside the lines, defying the 16 count box. Small girls melt down crayons and throw them in people's eyes just to get their attention. I gave up one day when the carriage horses ran away while my cargo was driving uphill. I'd rather be a rolling stone than let horses drag me away. that actually um, is going to prison for murder. And um, it's, it's kind of about that. It happened pretty recently. Um, it's called, um, He Slashed My Tires Once. <laughs> four cuts and four round rolled slabs of rubber sent fast forward on a valley plane installed into a human time machine could have been my cameo page in a murder novel. Four revolutions later, I sit the inside of my skull unaroused. That knife could have been utilized for my flesh. Um, so how is everybody tonight? Fine. Pretty good. Is everybody gonna get trashed? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Trashed? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Working on it! Right. There we go. A little courage. She doesn't talk with God. 
This one's about God. She drinks the rock. <laughs> she wants some drinks. They're like paramecium on an orange. This microscopic hemorrhage awakens God's cloud, as they say. Imagining that a statuesque, golden, jolly giant is there waving his sword in one hand and balancing his weights in the other. But time has been sent out for a marathon and the gun goes bang and the little pores that fill the face of this orange, of this golden man, on this cloud to rain, onto this ball with rains, all wondering when the fruit will rot. <laughs> So I've done a lot of interesting things in my life. This one's kind of about the ways to explain that my stilettos are a vehicle. That's a poem. <laughs> Next one. A 1965 Mustang, Shelby edition, on my heels. Racing the flesh highway like the Audubon. The mileage, as it stands, are two explosive volcanoes between ten blots of red lacquer. It is just a Skeleton disguised in peach hue attire, raw and will one day wrinkle. Gathering fistfuls of air and bar smoke, instigating rancid ways and coveted glass like finger painting marble altars. Teasing, floating organ filled trash, receptacles and woe, and consecrating porcelain gods with holy waters while the soul stays dirty. after a meal. He's letting you know you're doing a great job, you know? <laughs> um, so this one that I'm about to read was um, actually a hotel poem. I figured if um, anyone seen anything I did, they'd see this one. So <laughs> I'm hoping it's a crowd pleaser. <laughs> um, Yay! <laughs> You know, I, I, I like doing this too because I like bringing the book to the reading. It's like putting it up on a table so nobody can see your test. Because you know? <laughs> it's that big. It's awesome. It's fun. <laughs> it's called Equals. I once ruled that beings were moving tears of flesh instead of functional DNA or Barbie dolls with pulley strings, that we weren't molds in plastic. We force as magnets. The air of our organs dried in red, and to only carpet the next generation with a program installation or a Zen based novel of a future tribe illusion. Retrospective, I believe in forms less desired and chose to sign the dotted line where I could not reach the X or explain in ways like algebra. So much time has passed between my fingers since birth. I believe at times to give up, I always get my towel wet and wring it out the next morning, water down the drain, evaporates, then rains into the next cup, then drank in by another mouth. It's like um, a mirror, meaning a mirror, meaning a mirror, meaning a mirror. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. And I hope to see, um, I hope to see Tim next summer. Have a nice fall, Tim. <laughs> Tim Heron, thank you for that. Um, kind of going by the oracle, I have no order. Okay, okay. I have a couple more because um, I'm short but sweet, even though um, obviously I'm not physically short. <laughs> Very sweet. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I should be a goddamn comic. I know. Tough crowd, tough crowd tonight. Um, <laughs> I get no respect. I could start doing Tony Danza impressions, but you know what? I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we have 20 minutes, and um, I'm not wearing my stop watch here. I have this um, nice vintage piece of jewelry instead. Um, this one's called, um, Time's give, relative. what? Time's relative. Give me that. <laughs> Am I cut off? <laughs> Why don't you just put a little nipple on top of the glass? <laughs> the things I do for any kind of nipple are very well. Now, that's it's a nipple now. Allison, that's where he does that. Just the nipple, <laughs> I, I have to tell you that I'm really happy to be a feature today. It's, um, it's yes. an honor. Woo! Um, <laughs> 
Drinking Everclear and taking Vites, which um, um, <laughs> it's not like I do. Did you bring it up for everybody? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'm sorry I can't throw it up like confetti, but um, Next time. Yeah. I'll make a call. Maybe we can all um, do do Adderall. And we'll we'll blow some Smurf boogers out of our nose. <laughs> this one's called "Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death." <laughs> a holy apparatus attached to three cycles. The pedal turned the gears to seven lights, all resting in a dark room. Inside of a box, not cardboard, not Pandora's, not coffin, some kind of proverbial hoo ha over who could pinpoint status quo in blue jeans. I, a fetus evolved, wore latex pendulums around my ankles because I knew they always bounced back. Somewhere between the box, the cycles, and the holy apparatus, I found myself in his blue jeans with my pendulums. As if the box had no quarrel to the daylight that I always yearned to de delicately embrace with my white lace chest muscle. Yet I wanted this lack of morality. she dated Gibby and she's like I gotta go back by the buses because I was on the list I have to say bye I have to say thank you and she's like you want to walk with me I'm like well I don't want to be a dork I know there's going to be fans through back there trying to get their signatures you know so. and there were <laughs> they had like, different records of tickets to their arms I mean yeah Gibby awesome no, Gibby, Gibby Haynes Gibby Haynes his name and um he looks like he ate Burger King for four months straight and let me tell you like <laughs> If I could have Haynes her way, it's gone. It's better than Commando. It's like huffing fucking skin marks off tight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have it still because the guy is so freaking talented. Like, I love his exper it's like experimental psychedelic and metal music. It's yeah. just like nothing you ever heard. And he loves he uncoughs yeah. syrup, but he loves a megaphone as much as I do. And I just, I just noticed the ring around his finger, and I, I don't I don't think I I don't think I dumped my guy for him anyway. So that's all the question. Um, Anyways, we're back there, and he's signing tickets, and I'm, I, I, I get like this around rock stars sometimes, and I'm like, don't you ever get fucking annoyed by your fans? He's like, yeah, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I still have my Mac red lips on, right? Red as hell. Red, red as hell, and um, <laughs> I grab his face, and I just kiss the shit out of his cheek, and I just give him this look like, <laughs> and he just stares at me, and he... He goes like this and wipes my lipstick, looks at it, and he just looks at me and was like, Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets held 
sold out and I was grabbing people's tickets being obnoxious, trying to get lifts on their tickets too, like I was this big star or something. And then this like this like You're pretty, not? this pretty stout this pretty stout like white kid with dreadlocks. I don't get white people with dreadlocks, but that's just my opinion. I'm just like He's like, you're a poser. I just wanted to tell him, you know, like 1999 called, I want their terminology back. Whoa. Some of the bad surfers. Sorry. That's my story of the week. I've made a couple of road trips. And on with this, this poem, faux, faux romance novel sex. And um, thanks for coming out. And you guys all look stunning. And um, yeah, I see you. And Steve. And, 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 and Steve. And Steve. Steve's looking pretty holy tonight, you know? I like that. Yeah, me and Carmen, we decided can I, bite, to can I bite some of your hairs out, man? You need a good waxing. Down there, my feet too. Got hobbit well, I'm, not, I'm not in a feet. I don't have, I don't, that's, that's not where my fetish lies. It's Sorry. The um, Even that sounds a little weird, doesn't it? People are in the weird things, I, I know. Um, hey! I'm not gonna finish it. Hey, I'm all about it. If, if, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> After party at my place. It's Chateau Gatto. Faux romance novel sucks. Fabio rakes the willing in 360. I'm not talking about you. I'm just starting to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Uh, start over, please. All right. This, this poem is not about remediation. <laughs> it's not funny. No. I, uh, it's, it is kind of funny. I'm going to have to control my laughing while you get that on film, Andy. Um, okay, third time's a charm. Let me try this again. Faux romance novel sex. <laughs> I'll try to make it. You can do it. Fabio rapes the willy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In 360. Keep going. 362 monotonous pages of lost and filth. When <laughs> I can't do this, man. It's just too Yes, much. you can. Go. Yes, you can. Oh my God. Sorry, Darcy. Read it for her. Have a Let shot. her just Have a shot. Back. <laughs> Fabio rakes the willing in 362 monotonous pages of lust and filth, while Elton plays a casual ditty on ivory buttons against rainy days, as if you were blind to this bookshelf. A raging beast contrasting Bukowskiisms and climate, tears run nile, nile deep as the birds and bees ignored a silent decibel displayed for tweezered faces. Red candles melt the Mount Everest in her mind as she stands up unsubscribed with an empty heart-shaped chocolate candy box and the apple denied. I couldn't do that one, I'm sorry. <laughs> somebody, if, if somebody wants to read John it later, Dorsey. John Dorsey! John <laughs> Dorsey! Yeah, not me. I'm here to giggle. <laughs> Come on, John. You want that red? Come here, Schnookums. Should I have Fabio read it? I'd offer it, but they're getting it. That would be hilarious, right? Did anybody ever see the like, YouTube yeah, video of this poem slams? No, we're just waiting to get you. Right, okay, okay, I'm, I'm, get the feel here. I'm exiting. She's exiting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Novel sex. Fabio rapes the willing in 362 monotonous pages of lust and filth, while Elton plays a casual ditty on ivory buttons against rainy days, as if you were blind to this bookshelf. A raging beast contrasting Bukowski-isms and climate, tears run Nile deep as the birds and bees ignored a silent decibel and displayed for tweezered faces. Red candles melt on Mount Everest in her mind as she stands unsubscribed with an empty heart-shaped chocolate candy box and the apple <laughs> denied. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Steve Goldberg, you were a sex Alex. <laughs> Is this like Discordia? John Dorsey has spoken. Okay. Allison Hoverder, thank you very much.
It's all drink hey, juice. Man, where's our usual host? Special. I'm trying to get in there. He's our yes, that's it. Nick, 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 all right, everybody, give it up for Allison. Come on. I didn't give it up! Woo! Hell yeah!